In the lifetime of any building, 84% of the energy used is due to usage. So if you want an energy efficient building, I say oh, it's real simple. Turn out the lights, lock the doors, turn off the heat, and that's very efficient. But you can't do that. At the jointly held 2013 SIAM annual meeting and conference on control and its applications, Professor John Burns of Virginia Tech discussed the role of applied and computational mathematics in reducing the huge amounts of energy consumed by buildings and the related impact on climate change. Greenhouse gases produced by buildings account for about one-third of all the greenhouse gases in the world. And in the U.S., it's almost 50% of all the greenhouse gases. And they're produced by consuming energy. So if you can take buildings, the building stock, and make them just 10% more efficient, you would be equivalent to mitigating one gigaton of greenhouse gases. If you get them to be 50% more efficient, you'll get to the same order of magnitude as essentially a zero transportation sector. Okay, In other words, you can have cars that would run a million miles a gallon and it wouldn't be as important as getting energy efficient buildings just 10 to 12 percent more efficient. Control, optimization, design of whole building systems is the key to not only achieving some efficiency but maintaining it. Okay, design the building to be energy efficient, you've got to operate it smartly. Mathematically, a building is called a complex system because it's got all these components, HVACs, lighting, heating, and so forth. And when you put them all together, you can't simply say, well, the air conditioning system works this way, the lighting system works this way, and the people work that way, so now I know how the building is going to operate. You've got to account for all of it. That's why it's so complicated and so complex. According to Burns, managing the uncertainty in these complex systems requires sophisticated building controls along with optimization of building designs. Build it so that it's well insulated, that it's facing the right way. The architecture mixes with energy efficiency is a mathematical problem. It's about shapes and computation and design. This is what I would call direct or sort of raw simulation based design. To give you some estimate of what kind of compute power you need to do problems like that, for something like a collection of buildings, you're talking about a 10 petaflop machine. While computerized simulation can provide a basis for energy efficient design, the computational power required to do large scale simulations means that new computational methodologies, algorithms, and modeling techniques will be vital in creating advanced building technologies. You have to use computing in a way that says, I'm going to control how the lights are turned on, how they're turned off. I'm going to design the building to be efficient. And that's sort of a reverse thing. You don't know all the things. You don't know how many people are going to be in here. So you want to do this in a smart way. Because if you just simply say, well, suppose I have 200 people in the building, this is what happens. Now suppose I have 500 people in the building, this is what happens. Suppose the weather is sunny, it's shady. There's so many variables, you don't want to just do raw simulation and pick of all the scenarios. You want to do it in a way that sort of automatically determines what's the best way to operate the building, what's the best way to manage the building. While a total conversion to energy efficient buildings isn't in the near future, Burns pointed to some areas where gains could be made in the short term. If you're trying to do something that's going to work for all possible buildings, commercial buildings, residential buildings, that's way down in the future. But we need to start with something simple. Let's do something that would work, let's say, Walmart, because they're almost all the same, right? If we do that, that's going to be a first step, and that's sort of low-hanging fruit. There are people doing this. It's not like nobody's doing this. But there's a lot of mathematical issues that if we brought the right mathematics to bear, we could sort of step this up a little faster.